Welcome to Pastor Bill's Classroom. This study is in the Acts of Jesus, Lesson 15, Lying Tongues. Good afternoon, everybody. I hope uh, this message finds you doing well. I don't know how things are where you are, but I know where we are. We have seen a significant uptick in uh, this whole COVID-19 coronavirus thing. We have a number of people, whereas the and they're calling it the first wave, but to me this is, and what, what am I, who am I, but to me it's the second wave at least because, uh, you know, the first one, how did, we didn't hardly know anybody that had it. Uh, we knew of people indirectly, but now we actually have people within our church and uh, direct relatives of members of our church. And so, um, for the most part, doing okay, uh, but, but certainly uh, not out of the woods as far as danger is concerned. We have uh, just uh, a lot going on in our nursing homes here and among our young people here, lots of people who are, who are not, um, who've just got it and really need our prayers. And so let's, let's just open our time by, um, by offering prayers to God first for these. Heavenly Father, it's with uh, burdened hearts that we come to you, uh, not just locally, but all over. We're having another outbreak of this COVID-19 and many who are suffering, lots more who are scared and wisdom that's needed for our leaders. And God, we're lifting all these things to you because you say that we're to cast our cares on you because you care for us. And we're trusting that, God. We're believing that and we're asking God, for your intervention, we're praying, God, for healing for those that we know and, and protection for those that are uh, coming in contact with them, protection for our church and its members and its loved ones. And for those that are listening, God, for those that are related to them, God, you know their needs and situation. And we're just praying for them. We're, pray we're lifting this all up to you and we're asking for deliverance from this and we're asking for wisdom for our, our president and... Um, our, our uh, leaders, God, national level and state level and local level, giving them wisdom to know what to do and that we as people would be, um, would be good followers and, and make good judgment calls and, and uh, honor you, God, most especially above all other things. We pray these things, God, and we ask your blessings over our study now in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, we're in Acts. Chapter 5, and uh, we are making our way through this is officially the 15th time we've been together over acts 15th time we've been together here in my my living room dining room kind of uh, circumstance with this uh actually that side the old fish hanging over my shoulder there and uh still in the same place and here i am in the same place and we're together and i hope you're enjoying this i hope uh, it's a blessing to you it's my heart to to bring these things to you as god brings them to me uh, just so that we can be um well, just so that we can grow together. And so, you know what? Um, here I am uh, talking to you, but I'm going to have to get off the... Hang on right there. i got to get my Bible. <laughs> here I am talking about a Bible study. I don't even have my Bible, but thankfully I don't have to go far. Um, Acts chapter 5. Got a Bible now? Let's get over there. Uh, Acts chapter 5. Uh, we left off at the end of chapter 4. We're going to be beginning in chapter 5 here, down through verse 11 here in just a bit. Uh, start you off with a story. Uh, a man was headed out of town on a business trip to Chicago for a couple of weeks and uh, had a cat and he didn't know who to leave it with and so he called his brother and his brother is not exactly a cat person but uh, his brother would, you know, would help him. And so he just asked if, if his brother would check in on his cat, make sure he's fed, make sure everything's okay. And cat was an outdoor cat. He just wants to make sure everything is good. And so gone for about a week and a half and looking forward to coming home and called his brother to check on things. And brother says, everything's going fine. And so when he got to the point of asking about the cat, uh, the brother paused for a minute and said, um, he died. That's all he said. And on the phone, and then he said, oh, wait, wait a minute, I got another phone call coming through. I'll talk to you about it in a minute. And he hangs up. So, so the last thing this guy hears is that his cat is dead. And, and then his brother just, you know, sort of insensitively just moves on to another phone call and, and like it doesn't matter to him. And, and uh, so he kept hitting redial on his phone until his brother finally picked up, until he finally hung up on his, 
whoever he was talking to, and and um, he said, "What do you mean? I mean, the last thing I heard from you say is that 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 the cat died." He said, "What what happened? What's what's going on?" He says, "Well, he said, what else was I supposed to say? I mean, he's dead. I don't know what I was supposed to say." He said, "Well, you could have. That's so insensitive. I mean, this is my cat. Uh, I loved my cat, and I'm sad about it." And he says, "Well." You could have you could have let me down easier. He says, "What what was I supposed to say?" Well, he says, "You could have started out by saying, well, the cat was playing on the roof, and that he fell off and hurt his leg, and then uh, you could have just said, well, he 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 didn't make it, and it sort of would have let me down easier or something." And and uh, the brother says, "Well, I'm sorry. I'm I'm just uh, you know, I'm I'm not trying to hurt your feelings or anything like that. I just just you know, I was just trying to tell you the truth of what was going on here. And, and so the brother said, well, it's okay. And then, so they kind of went along with the conversation. He says, oh, by the way, how's mom doing? And the, the brother paused again. And he said, um, she's playing on the roof. <laughs> uh, you may not get that one, but I think it's funny. So is it ever okay to lie? Is it ever okay? Is there ever appropriate time? Uh, this afternoon we're going to be looking at uh, a couple who thought it was okay, but they were, literally, they were dead wrong. Story of Ananias and Sapphira, sandwiched between two progress reports, if you will, of the church and of the progression uh, of the gospel. The end of chapter 4, verses 32 through 37, gives us this glowing report of how God's just moving and working and, and the gospel spreading and... How people just honoring God with their lives, like uh, Joseph we saw, uh, who we know as Barnabas, how, how God was just uh, opening his heart to this open-eyed ministry, like we talked about last time, this open-eyed ministry that he had, where God was just opening his heart to, you know, he's got a piece of property, he's not doing anything with it, and people are in need, and God can use it, and so he saw everything that he had as belonging to God, and so as God desired, he did that. So, uh, and then, and then, uh, Following the story of Ananias and Sapphira in verses 12 through 16 of chapter chapter 5, we have again a glowing report of the status of the church and how God powerfully working through the apostles. And so, so on any either side of this sandwich, we have glowing reports, but in the middle is something a little icky. In fact, something pretty bad. It turned turned out good. I mean, the result was, uh, if you will, a... a Holiness in the church, learning a lesson certainly, but but the ones who had to pay the price for the lesson ultimately was this couple named Ananias and Sapphira. So let's take a look at their story. Like I said, we're in Acts chapter five, uh, beginning in verse one. It says now. So we just got off the story where where Joseph, uh, or we know him as Barnabas, had given sold land, given the entire amount to the church to be broken up however they wanted to, and then we have a, a twist. Look at what it says. But a man, it starts off with but, so uh-oh, that's not a good conjunction. We've flipped. Something's not going real. A man named Ananias and his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property. So, so far it just sounds like the same with uh, Barnabas. But kept back some of the price for himself. Well, Barnabas didn't do that. He sold and gave all of it. With his wife's full knowledge. And bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias... Why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit to keep back some of the price of the land while it remained unsold? Did it not remain your own? Now, some people read this passage and they hear at the end of chapter 4, the beginning of chapter 5, here there's some sort of a Christian socialism, uh, communism, like they had, they had everything together, it says there, but they had everything together because that's where their heart was. Not, it's not a thing saying we absolutely have to sell everything. We have to all move into one big dorm together. It's not saying that. If anything, it's it's affirming private property because it says here, uh, did you know? While it remained unsold, did it not remain your own? The private property. Anyway, keep going. Verse four. After it was sold, was it not under your control? Like I said, it affirms private property, not communism. Anyway. Why is it that you've conceived in your, your, this deed in your heart and you have not lied to men? Here's the issue, but to God. By the way, every time you lie, you're ultimately lying to God. As if God isn't there, like he doesn't hear you. Um, don't fool yourself. As he heard these words, as Ananias fell down and breathed his last, and with great fear came on all those who heard it. Like I said, it was pretty stringent for the church. 
The young men got up, covered him, and after carrying him off, they buried him. Now there elapsed an interval of about three hours. So the husband died. Now the wife came in, not knowing what had happened. She didn't. Peter responded to her, tell me whether you sold the land for such and such price. He's putting her to the test because as, as he's going to say here, they're putting the Holy Spirit to the test. And she said, yes, that was the price. And then Peter said to her, why is it that you've agreed together to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door and they will carry you out as well. And immediately she fell at his feet and breathed her last. And a young man came in and found her dead. And they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. And great fear came over the whole church and over all who heard these things. So, wow. That's a story, isn't it? Uh, makes you think twice about, about the sin of, of, of lying, doesn't it? And, um, well, it should. Uh, so so what, what actually is going on here? What actually happened? Well, number one, no one ever no one forced them to give anything. It, it was their option. It wasn't like the apostles, it doesn't say here the apostles put out any kind of mandate. Anybody that has extra stuff needs to sell it. Like I said, that's communism. This, this is, if you will, a free market world. They had a right to keep it. It was theirs. They had a right to sell it and give it. They had a right to sell it and keep all the money. They could have done whatever they wanted to. Uh, as we're going to see, what, what they did wrong was they misrepresented. They lied about what they did. Keeping the money, giving the money, that's not the issue. It's the fact that they lied about it. No one forced them to give anything. It's the same way it is today. Uh, we're free to give. Uh, we're free not to give. That is the policy of the church. That is the policy of the New Testament. Uh, no one is to force you in any way. Uh, that is not the church. Uh, uh, but, but the passage clearly affirms private property. Like I said, you, you have Ananias and Fire that could do whatever they want to with their stuff. Peter says that. But uh, what they did was um, put the whole... Is the Holy Spirit really among us? I don't think they're really thinking that, but man, it, they should have thought that because, boy, were they made an example out of? Were they not? So, 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 what went wrong? Well, uh, stuff that happens to us. Uh, number one, uh, they love their money, and uh, they didn't know how much they loved their money until they had this big pile of cash in front of them. Uh, I think going into it, probably they thought, you know what, well, it's a, it's a good idea. They saw the need, but, but man, when they saw the pile of cash, their, their, uh, uh, the bad side, the, the, the sinful side, their sinful hearts got to them, and uh, they devised this plan. Uh, they loved their money. They also loved the approval of people, and so they, they thought, well, how can, we, how can we give part of it and act like we give all of it? And so uh, that's kind of what happened there. So, so loving money and loving the approval of people, uh, led to this lie and that's the real issue whether they gave or whether they didn't gave the percentage that they gave it's it's that's not the issue that's never the issue the issue in this case is the fact that they lied about it they misrepresented it a as if God were not among them as if uh, God was uh, uh, not able to discern and uh, lead the church. They had certainly uh, lied and put to the test the Holy Spirit. So, so what does this mean for us? Does God always judge the sin of lying the same way? Well, <laughs> apparently not. But you're still here, right? And I'm still here. Let me tell you a story just to reveal um, how awesome a person I am. Um, shame to this. So I'm sitting here writing this sermon when I wrote it. Which wasn't today, and um, I write in the sermon. I was sitting in my living room, my laptop in front of me, and I was uh, typing away on the theme of the horrors, the horribleness of of lying. And there next to me is my cell phone, and I get this uh, phone call, and it's a number I don't recognize. And uh, my first inclination is to not answer it, but you know, I'm the local pastor, and I don't know everybody, and I need to be available, and I wanted to be, and so. So I, uh, I answered the phone call. Well, as soon as I answered the phone call, I knew I'd made a mistake. Uh, there was this pause, and then there was this sound of sort of people talking in the background. You know what that is, right? And then this foreigner's voice comes on and says, I would like to speak to Mr. Wodell, and um, is he available? Well, of course, he was speaking to Mr. Wodell. <laughs> That's me. Uh, but my answer, here I am typing a sermon on lying. My answer was, 
Um, he's not available right now. Goodbye. <laughs> so, so the one speaking to you today is a hypocrite. Just want you to know that. So, so why didn't Ananias and Sapphira live through it? I lived through it. You lived through a lot of lies, just like I have. Why did Ananias and Sapphira not live through it? Well, bottom line is, wrong place, wrong time for them. Wrong place, wrong time. It, it, it was a situation. It was a public situation. It was a church-wide situation. And uh, it was a circumstance in which God chose to make an example out of it. And that's just the bottom line. Uh, God judges all sin, sometimes for the believer. Uh, the discipline for sin is physical death. God's got a right, doesn't he? God can do where he wants to. You're still, even if he killed you, He's still not giving you what you deserve, does he? You're still going to heaven. And that's fire are going to be in heaven. I'm convinced of that. But, but, but uh, sometimes, sometimes it can be harsh. God has the right to make an example of you if he so desires. So, so what can we learn here? Some, several things. Um, number one, lying is a very, very serious sin. Would you agree? It's a serious sin. It really is. When we lie, every time we're lying to the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God indwells the church. And so every time you lie, you're doing it in the presence of the Holy Spirit. Understand? Serious business. We're putting him to the test. When, when we sin at all, it's tantamount to putting the Spirit to the test. Because we're saying, maybe he's not here. It's as if we're saying, maybe he's not watching. Well, no. That is not true. So lying is a serious sin. Number two, lying is the antithesis of who God is. Lying is the antithesis of who God is. One of seven things in Proverbs specifically that says that God hates. You know what that is? One of those seven things. Just seven things that God specifically says that he hates. One of those is a lying tongue. A lying tongue. Jesus says, I am the way and the truth. Lying is a serious thing. When Jesus is the truth, then he is. Nearly 80 times in the New Testament, Jesus makes the statement, I tell you the truth. The Holy Spirit himself is, according to the Bible, the spirit of truth. John calls him this several times in his gospel and in his letters. Satan, on the other hand, is the father of lies and uh, the deceiver, the scriptures say. The church is the pillar, according to 1, John, uh, 1 Timothy 3.15, the pillar and the foundation of the truth. Truth is... And falsehood are serious things not to be trifled with. The church is to speak the truth in love and put away all falsehood. See, these truth, we, we think of, we, we lived in a day in which people just randomly lie and don't think anything about, about shading the truth. And um, this is his universe. It's not your world. It's his. Be very careful. We've made an example out of Ananias and Fire. So, so what lessons can we glean from their example since they... They had to bear the brunt of the example. Uh, what can we gain from this? Well, uh, first of all, uh, be committed to integrity. Are you? Are you committed to integrity on every issue? Here we are coming up with our tax season, even though it's late, July 15th. Are, are you committed to integrity? The truth on the smallest, seemingly insignificant levels, are you committed to that? Serious sin often uh, has subtle beginnings. Uh, I, I, I don't think this was, like I said, I don't think this couple just sat down and say, how can we mess this up? How can we, how can we lie to the Holy Spirit and come close to getting ourselves, if not all the way getting ourselves killed? That's not what they were thinking. That was not their plan. Uh, started off with uh, not, not being fully aware of why they were doing what they were doing and then getting themselves into hot water, like I said, when they got a pad of pile of cash and uh, thinking somehow they could get away with it. And boy, that, were they wrong about that. Uh, white lie is not an acceptable, uh, but it, it certainly opens up the door to bigger lies. The, the supposedly white lie, those, Thomas O'Malley said this, he says, those who believe in all, it's all right to tell a white lie soon go colorblind. Yeah, that's right. Psalm 51, let's take a look. Here's the only verse we're going to be putting up there. Let's get, put it there on the screen for you. Psalm 51, verse 6, David speaking says, Behold, speaking to God, you desire the truth in the innermost being, in the hidden part, you will make me know wisdom. Wow, in the innermost. That's where a lie starts, and that's also where it stops. It's in our heart. 
it's in the deepest parts of, of who we are. So, so number one, we need to be committed to integrity in the deepest parts of who we are. Number two, be committed to the truth no matter how much it may hurt. Read a story of a coach, a high school coach of the Cleveland, Coach Cleveland Stroud was his name. He coached the Bulldogs of Rockdale High School uh, in Georgia. 1991 was their championship year. He's been building up this high school team and, and boy, he had some boys that were gonna be seniors that year and they were outstanding and they really had a shot. I mean, they'd done pretty well the season before, but boy, uh, with a year on them and uh, better coaching, um, they were definitely headed to the playoffs and potential were going to make a run for the state championship. Well, it turned out uh, they won uh, five games of the playoffs. And then the final game, uh, they went in as the underdog. They came in, came up from behind, and they won the state championship. But if you go uh, to Rockdale County High School today, you will not see a championship trophy in their glass case from 1991. Do you want to know why? Unfortunately... It was taken away from them. And it was not taken away from them because they lied. It was taken away from them, be well, because they told the truth. In particular, Coach Cleveland Stroud told the truth. See, unbeknownst to him, in one of the playoff games, one of their players played just 45 seconds, but that player was ineligible to play because of academics. Uh, the player didn't know it. The coach didn't know it. They didn't understand or come to the understanding of it till a couple of weeks after the championship had been uh, uh, completed and won, after they had gotten their trophy and put it in their glass case and all that. Super sad. But when the coach heard or it came to his knowledge that this player had played for 45 seconds and that, that he was ineligible, um, he had to report it. People came to him and says, Coach, it was just 45 seconds. No one's going to know if you keep it to yourself. And here, here was his, his answer to them. I think this is a great answer. And this is a, an answer we need to have for ourselves. He says, people forget the scores of ball games." he said. But they'll never forget what you're made of. People will forget the scores. They'll forget a lot of stuff, ladies and gentlemen. But they'll never forget... What you're made of. Remember, again, David there in Psalm 51. Behold, you desire truth in the innermost being. That's what you're made of. Sorry. Phone call. I'll turn it off. They'll, they, they'll never forget what you're made of. Be committed to the truth no matter how much it hurts. And then a third and final thing. We need to do everything as to the Lord. We're not doing for people's eyes. We're doing it because the Lord sees again. That was the whole issue with Ananias and Fire. They thought God sees some things and God doesn't see other things. And unfortunately, they were in a circumstance where God made an example out of this to show everybody. Um, no, no, ma'am. Uh, no, sir. We need to do everything as to the Lord, knowing that lying of any kind ultimately is lying to him. Let, let me ask yourself a question. We've been through a lot of uh, statue tearing down here in our country recently just ignorant stuff just in my opinion stupid stuff as if somehow that's going to change things it's going to set in stone some things unfortunately the exact same things they, they, they want to get rid of they say they want to get rid of 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 uh and this is just my opinion from my hip i apologize and you may not care to hear it maybe you want to pause it right near fast forward but but again it, it in, in the name of getting rid of, of uh, racism, they want to make us all mad at each other. I, I don't get that. I don't see where there's progress on that. And I saw this video, this image, where it showed uh, the, the Statue of Liberty kind of standing behind her pedestal, hiding and saying, am, am, I, am I next? Am I next? That's the most, maybe, I guess, arguably the most important statue of our nation is the Statue of Liberty. It stands for, for who we are and what our nation, at least what we used to be. So, but back to the Statue of Liberty. Have, have you ever seen the top of the Statue of Liberty? I'm talking about the top of her head. Have you ever seen it? By the way, it's immaculate. She's got a part down the middle. Uh, she's got, uh, her hair is all laid out. And uh, the reason why we know that is because we have airplanes and we have drones and we're able to see that. You can't climb up and see that. And of course you can't see it from the ground. But, but it, it's interesting, this statue was built in the 1800s and of course given to us by France and, and was erected in the 1800s. It was, it was brought to us, it was made by a person, it was 
uh, given to us and it was erected in a day in which once it was put on its pedestal, no one, is, there was no such thing as airplanes nor was there even a thought of such a thing. As far as they were concerned, no one would ever see the top of her head again. Now you would think, you would think they would have left her ball or they would have just left it unfinished. Who's going to see it, right? Who's going to know? But today, in the day of drones and airplanes, you fly over the top of this wonderful statue, and guess what you're going to see? You're going to see an immaculate head of hair. But come to find out, the, the artist, the, the sculptor who, who built her, who put her together and who, who designed her and built her, uh, put as much detail into what you could not see on top of her head as he did her face. Why? Because integrity matters. Integrity matters. What, who, who are you doing this for? Are, are you doing it just for, for those, for, for just a show? Or are you doing it the right way because the right way is the only way? See, it says a lot about our hearts, doesn't it? We need to do everything as to the Lord, knowing ultimately that when we're doing something without integrity, we're doing it to Him. God bless you. Have a great day. Hold to the truth. Let the truth be who you are. Starts from the heart. We'll see you soon. Thanks for visiting. Find us at www.islandbaptistchurch.org.